In my never-ending quest to confuse my muscle memory and annoy my co-workers with increasingly exotic looking and sounding computer peripherals, I decided it's time to stop playing with vermin and start tossing balls and putting pen to paper. Confusing idioms aside, I was never interested in either trackballs nor graphic tablets, but neither was I in split keyboards, until I tried one because someone mentioned it in the comments. Now I'm a believer. But this video isn't a sales pitch for trackballs or graphic tablets, it is a user experience and productivity report on how I fared after 3 months on either, highlighting the good, the bad and the ugly. If you were ever wondering what it's like to use one of these and if either can improve your productivity, like speed up your video editing for example, the answer is both yes and no, as well as it depends. So strap in and lean back for another episode of me talking way too long about something LLMs will probably summarize for you in one sentence. First and foremost, this is as always split up into several chapters. In this first one, we'll tackle the trackball. Then it's all about the pen and if it is really mightier than the word before wrapping up with a summary comparing both to the current running champion, the mouse. Let's start with an important question. How did I end up with a trackball in the first place? Well, after leaning back and spending all Saturday afternoon watching other people on YouTube talk about productivity, I thought, that's exactly what I need. A new product. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. A trackball it shall be. After all, you see them in many studio environments and professionals all over the world seem to put them in higher regards. And besides, I thought in the worst case I can just sell it again and it might even make an interesting video. Neither of which came true, by the way. Anyway, there are a lot of options out there. Trackballs have existed for a while. There are even gaming variants. But in the end I went with the most mainstream and possibly conservative option out there, the Logitech MX Ergo S. Some might even claim that it isn't a true trackball with its focus on thumb-heavy navigation while also retaining the rodent shape instead of going balls first. I tend to agree and while writing this video I've been wondering if I should give the Kensington Expert mouse a try, which even though having mouse in the name seems far more ballsy than what I picked, but that's for another day. Maybe. On the Ergo S you have to exclusively use your thumb, which I found comfortable but also limiting due to a lack of dexterity on mine. It took a while to get used to. At first my accuracy and speed basically collapsed, frequently missing my target and taking ages to reach my on-screen destinations. Couple that with the split keyboard I was also familiarizing myself with at the time resulted in a fantastical firework of misfires. But as time moved on and as I got more familiar with fondling my ball, it actually started getting quite fun. There is an inherent comfort that follows right after the initial learning curve a certain level of late backness. It's a bit hard to describe but not having to move your hand, not lifting anything of any weight had a very relaxing effect on me. My primary usage next to my office heavy work at the time was editing these YouTube videos and here the trackball was both fun but also kind of a pain in the butt. For example, depending on the sensitivity it takes multiple flicks to get across the entire screen. Yes, you do that with the mouse too, but for me it always felt much more cumbersome by comparison. The Ergo S does have a button to specifically deal with this, where you can change the sensitivity on the fly, but I never managed to get used to this. In an odd way, the natural comfort of the trackball off screen was diminished by the unnatural movement it provided on screen. Another issue was my accuracy selecting the finer things, like the middle part between two clips in order to add a transition, which really tested my patience. The entire operation fell apart though when smooth movement was required. Despite all of this, I enjoyed my time with the trackball and I genuinely thought I'd gotten quite good at it. There was just one final annoyance, dirt. I'd like to think that I keep a rather tidy environment, so I was a bit surprised at how often I had to clean my ball, or to be more precise, the crotchy area it resides in. In the end, I never lost the feeling as if I was being artificially slowed down, held back by a ball and chain of sorts. So much so that I eventually decided that I wanted something else, so I spent another Saturday afternoon in sweatpants watching YouTube videos before coming across graphic tablets, which is when epiphany struck again. Whoa. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. Graphic tablets, just like trackballs, have been around for a while. Initially, I had a really weird thought when thinking about getting one. Am I, a mere mortal, even allowed to touch the pen of those that can draw life? 
But once again, YouTube, the world's greatest 24-7 shopping channel, pointed me towards the right direction. Speaking of shopping, the cheese shop is now open at shop.cheeseturbulence.com. Get your seasonal attire today and show off your new look around the neighborhood. As a welcome bonus, use the code CHEESE for a 5% discount. Anyway, after scouring YouTube and seeing the videos from Creative Video Tips, great channel by the way, on how he uses his for editing, I was sold. I went for the new Wacom Intuos Pro Medium, which is an 11.5 by 8.1 inch sized tablet, with a drawing surface of 10.4 by 5.8 inches. Navigating a computer with a pen feels even weirder than using a trackball at first. There's an immediate abstraction layer that needs to be pierced before it gets better. You also have to make a choice whether you want to force the screen proportions onto the tablet or not. Let me try to explain. The Intuos Pro uses a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but if your screen does not match that aspect ratio, you will have to make the choice of whether to squeeze or stretch it. I decided on the latter, but only because I have two screens and I wanted to maximize my drawing area. Because of the orientation of my second screen though, I ended up with an unfortunate amount of dead space, which resulted in a smaller drawing area, but quicker access across both screens. Alternatively, you can also set it up so that it works on a per screen basis, but that requires manual switching, which I didn't want. Initially, all of these options made my experience a bit clunky. Unsure of what was best, I kept switching around, never getting used to one way or another. After I decided to buckle down though and stick to a config, everything vastly improved. The pen itself also took some time to get used to. Not because of the shape, I'll get to that in a second, but because normal pens don't have three buttons on it. It was a bit finicky at first, and still is trying to click on them while retaining the on-screen position. Which brings me to my biggest complaint, the sensitivity. Now, I do realize that I am complaining about one of the major benefits of it, the fact that every tiny movement is translated. But if you for example just want to do a single left click, which by default is done so by tapping by the way, not clicking, it's very tempting to move a tiny bit on your way down and that tiny movement on my reduced surface area resulted in a lot of missed targets. There are adjustments for this of course, but I haven't found the perfect setting just yet and believe this is simply something I have to get used to. In a weird way, it is the exact opposite of what the trackball does. There I just lift my thumb after having navigated over the target and with absolute no danger of the cursor moving, it's bullseye. Luckily, this is a minor downside compared to the many benefits I found the pen to have. Hitting those finer points in the video edit, for example, are a dream or editing a photo was much easier, even to the mouse. It might be obvious, but drawing felt the absolute best, like retouching parts of photos that required the familiar strokes we all learned as little ones. This is what it was made for, and it shows, but that doesn't mean it's what it's exclusively good at. For example, it's almost indescribable how easy it feels to clutch this well-known object that is the pen. It's extremely lightweight, so holding it all day never felt straining. On the Intuos Pro line, it also has fantastic customization options, where you can change either the balance or the grip of the pen. But there's one more thing that makes this my new favorite input method. Muscle memory. This is the graphic tablet's secret trick. Once you get used to it, your brain will realize that on-screen elements will always be in the same spot because it essentially represents the screen. When that happens, you no longer move your cursor to where you want to go, but you instead jump. This was the productivity hack I was hoping for. Movements I no longer had to think about. They just happen. But every app is different and those I use less are definitely prone to tracking towards the destination instead. It also only works if you keep the apps open in full screen or always in the same location. For example, like when I'm in DaVinci Resolve and I want to adjust the attributes on a clip. I know where that panel is, those settings are now changed way faster than it used to be. There is also an odd satisfaction of adjusting dials and knobs using the pen that I still find giddy after all these months. But it still isn't perfect. Some days when I'm relaxing and trying to take my mind off things, a sudden thought strikes my consciousness. Oh, oh. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. So what does this all mean exactly? Well, I'm not quite sure either. My trial run with both ended up revealing a lot more than I thought. Don't get me wrong, I do really enjoy the use of the pen, there's something inherently natural about it that I really like. 
I like it so much so that I don't put it down anymore, which I am not sure is a good thing. For example, when keyboard input is required, I immediately switch to it, still gripping on, resulting in a seamless transition without any need to take my peepers off from the precious glare. But, yeah, there's always a but, my keyboard input is suffering deeply from this, from not having access to all my fingers. And some days, some days I'm just too lazy to pick up the pen and will use the trackball instead, which still resides on my desk. I know I was quite negative on it, but I also find it the easiest to use when you just quickly need to do something that doesn't require much accuracy. A mouse would do the same, but the trackball doesn't need any additional space to operate besides its own size and is a perfect companion in this combination. It's also much better suited to operate from an odd angle. In any position other than sitting down, the pen became nearly impossible to use for me. This back and forth is why I sometimes still long for the mouse, which always works and always does exactly what I want. Granted, it'll take decades before my clocked in time with the new peripherals even comes close to this one, but I think there's a reason why this is the reigning champion. It sits perfectly in the middle. It doesn't have the pinpoint accuracy of the pen nor the laid backness of the trackball, but it feels the most complete out of all of them, by a long shot. And even considering comfort, the Amex Master has long been a good companion to me and more ergonomic options have always been available too. Still, for the time being, my main input method will remain the pen. Editing has just become a tad bit more fun with it, and I do feel that I breeze through the UI just a tiny bit faster. Muscle memory is also building, and with time, more interface placements will become second nature. Or at least I'm hoping that they will. A small side note on software, which I didn't touch on at all in this video, because honestly, they're all kind of the same, in a good way. Both Logitech and Wacom let you customize every single button, sensitivity, as well as create application-based profiles that switch whenever chosen app is active, which I'm fully utilizing on my tablet, where I have every single button mapped to DaVinci Resolve commands, including key combinations, to make my editing life just a little bit more pleasant. Now, I am aware that I completely ignored trackpads and vertical mice, but I wonder, is there anything else out there that you think might be worth a visit? I keep thinking about the Kensington, as I feel like I didn't give trackballs a fair shot with limiting myself to the Ergo S, and I am wondering if I should give this another try. Or what other unusual input devices have you heard of? I know there's the unholy combination of keyboard and trackball, something I will actually check out in the next video. Anyway, let me know down below, and as always, thank you so much for watching. This was a shorter one, but hopefully not much less enjoyable. Have a fantastic late summer, and see you again in the next one. Bye! Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh.